everybody for joining us for another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 131 with your host Vince D'Alessandro, John Renstrom, and Daniel the Grominator Gronk. <laughs> All right, guys. How <laughs> are you? Good, good. How you doing? Good, good. I hate hail. <laughs> I feel I'll like I've said that before. <laughs> I'll never get tired of hearing it. <laughs> yeah, I hate hail. You I'll guys... Cards. Well, I, I ended up calling, I, I called up John and I, I asked him some advice because I'm working on a four wheel drive truck, pretty up high. My standard uh, stools and, and things I stand on aren't tall enough. And my my elbow was hurting right away. I was like, oh, this, this stuff doesn't work. Yeah, you can't be pushing, you can't have that rod at shoulder height. Yeah, it just so. I went around looking for something bigger and I'm working on a ladder now that sucks. <laughs> and I went shopping for a, like a roll and fold. Do you guys ever use a roll and fold? You know I've seen them. Yeah. That I'm seems sure like what that is. they're like little scaffolds, but they, they fold up. Uh-huh. So you can, you can sit them up against a wall or something like that. But a lot of construction guys use them. We used to use them for construction. Go to Harbor Freight and get one of the, the scaffolds. things. It's not the scaffolding things. Yeah, they I mean, sell like small scaffolding for fairly cheap. Yeah, and it's sketchy as hell, even yeah. on the lowest setting. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a quick you, bench. Yeah, when you get up on there, you know, it feels like made in China. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a quick bench is 350 bucks. I know, but they sell something at, at a Home Depot, I believe, that is just no, like they a don't. quick bench. Yeah. No, they don't have that yeah. anymore. I've seen it. I I've think that's it. only at specific not, Home Depots, though. Not with, it's it's not tall enough. That's what we have already. We already have those. Well, if look you're, for uh, drywaller stools, or get that's the stilts, the drywaller stilts. There, there you go. go. That's what the quick bench was for. It was a, it was for drywallers. That's right. why it's got the adjustable legs and everything. Now, for those of you out there that haven't met Daniel Grom yet, he sounds bigger than he is. He's actually about five foot two, but he's just one massive of a man on on the inside, aren't you, Daniel? I used to be five eight, but I shrunk over the years. Yeah. <laughs> It's all the too many the, extreme sports. Extreme sports did they, they they shortened you by taking bone mass out. Yes, yeah, they did. <laughs> He's gonna smack me next time I see him. I I'm taller if I stand on my third leg though. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, I am gonna see Daniel soon because I just booked our tickets to SEMA this year. This is the first year I'm going to SEMA. Woohoo! Uh, so wear comfortable shoes. Yeah, that's what I heard. A lot of walking. You'll walk. Uh, Robin and I last year walked on average of like seven miles a day. It was stupid. Really? Hey, that's oh, that's man. that's an easy day, man. I do twice yeah. that at Disneyland. <laughs> that's why I don't go to Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to see my John. He's not going. He's going to be at the nope. Mega Media event, which. Uh, nope. That's coming up uh, also in October. So if you haven't yeah. gotten your tickets to Mega Media, get over that'll be there. The, yeah, that'll be the week before uh, SEMA. Yeah, that's the 20th, I believe. The 19th, 20th. Yeah. Uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Right, three days. Yeah, um, yeah, we're doing a going to do a full classroom day. So and that's going to be a that's going to be at uh, John Hiley's place, right? John Hiley's in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I actually have a 20 year grade school reunion that day on the 20th in Chicago. So I'll be close to Ohio, but not quite. Yeah. 20 year. What? Great school. Great school? school? Yes. Great school? Yeah. I'm, Why would anybody do that? Because. That, wait, that, <laughs> let me see if I understand this correctly. You're going to risk getting shot in Chicago to see grade school kids? Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think there would be anybody I'd want to see from my grade school. That's the only people I'd want to see. I don't want to see anyone from my high school. Although the boys, I went to all all boys high school, 
and uh, those guys I went to grade school with. So, and then why would the hell you want to go if it's all guys? It, well, that was high school. I wouldn't want to go to my high school reunion. Oh, okay. I'm going to my grade school, which was co-ed, and okay. you know, I spent eight years of my formative years with these people, and we're. I talked to like maybe like sixty percent of the people I went to grade school with still back yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, really? No, I went to three different grade schools because we moved around a bit when I was a kid. So. Uh, yeah, that might yeah, be a little bit that. different, but yeah, yeah, it's the it's the whole parochial school thing. You know, we we did everything together, and when you're from Chicago and and you're from a small neighborhood, you know everyone, and you think everyone is just like you. So, <laughs> you know. I love I love it when you say Chicago in a small neighborhood. The last grade school I attended was in a town of 500, 500 people. 500? 500. Wow. And it was 35 miles to the next town, and there was nothing in the middle. Wow. There was only six kids in our whole class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, well, that's how Chicago is, though. If, if you grow up in a... a a big city that that's kind of why I landed in Long Beach, California too, because it has a small, it's a big city, but it has a small town appeal to it. And, uh, you know, Chicago is all made up of ne neighborhoods, you know, and yeah, that's why, like you talk to people about Chicago style pizza and everyone has a different pizza that they like based on what they grew up with in that neighborhood. Sure. Yeah. So. And, and see, I've still never had Chicago style pizza. Well, don't go I get don't, deep dish pizza because that's not Chicago style pizza. That's well, not I don't, what Chicago is. Unfortunately, I'm stuck uh, getting the gluten free, and and as soon as you do that, you ruin pretty much everything. Oh, pretty much. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think you're going to find gluten free pizza in Chicago, in like a neighborhood no. Chicago pizza place. You might, no, but I, I no. highly doubt it. I wouldn't trust it anyway. Don't, yeah. don't even bother. Yeah. No, I don't. I just get to stare at it lovingly. Right. With with <laughs> gazing appreciation. Little don't drool. They, don't they have a pill for that? No. They do have pills that if I do get into something and I, I start getting sick, it only helps ease. The, I, I'm, it gets me down to three days of just bad pain. Right. So it's not so bad. And you know, it knocks out all the other stuff. Yeah. Bad pain and pain out your butthole, right? <laughs> well, no. Um, it... it it pretty much stops that and all the bleeding because I okay do. okay no, we, let's, let's stop this conversation <laughs> right now. Let's, we might want to edit that. that. Let's move on to tools. Yeah, let's talk about PR right. tools. Today. Okay, yeah, Aww. yeah. So yeah, we do actually have a topic, and it's not blood and stool. So, <laughs> I didn't put in. But we might have a show title. <laughs> 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 all right, so. Vince, you said you got some of the tequilas. I got the full line of the the tequila hand tools now. I've got the regular set that they first sold. I've got the tequila minis. Tequila minis were killing it for me on the the super duties. I did a whole row of super duties, all one right after the next. I started with a two fifty, a three fifty, a four fifty, and a five fifty. And the tequila minis will get above that brace, above the windshield, and snake all the way down to. Are the they windshield. thinner? They are thinner. They are, are. They are. Are you talking about these minis that I just got, which are seven thirty second? Yeah, the tequila minis come with the solid red handle, solid blue handle. No, these are even newer than that. <gasps> I think those are top secret. We're not supposed to talk about. No, them. they just went on sale today. Oh, okay. Oh, so we can talk about it. Yay! Yes. All right. Yeah, he he holding those out. These are going to be a green and black handle and an orange and black handle, depending on. Left and right. Okay. So all right, they are so seven. You can, you can seven snake them in a in, in one of those you know stock holes. A so, stock yeah. hole, a small stock hole. So yeah. okay. The, now the, the, a, a retainer hole. Yes. Now these tools were were made by A One specifically to the specifications of of Craig from uh, Anson uh, PDRs specifications, and they have the slight curve on them and the sharp tip, just like the other ones. But what's really okay. What's really neat about it is that there's not a lot of seven thirty seconds tools out there to fit in those small yeah. holes, and if they are, they're a little bit on the flimsy side, possibly, or you could bend them. This is these are rigid as hell. According to Craig, when I talked to him the other day about it, they specially ordered this this rod for the seven thirty seconds, and I mean it is it's stiff. They they don't bend very well. Huh. So, wow. 
I'm gonna have to check them out. Yeah, they're very slick. I, I got it. Mean, just on the phone with Christina too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm setting this. I'm setting the whole shop that I'm at up with Gloopal for uh, push for doing their own push for paints on the rails. Oh, nice. Uh, on all these aluminum trucks. For those of you that don't know that much about the auto body world right now, uh, stud pullers that were always used on the steel, they make a version of that for aluminum, and it completely sucks. I can outdo it 10 to 1 using the glue. What glue are you using, John? Oh, I beat the hell out of everything with hog glue. <laughs> <laughs> hog glue and uh, root beer and tab weld uh, on these aluminum trucks. And I tell you what, I've it, it's taken the toll on tabs. Yeah. I have broke gang greens i have broke the black ice i have broke the tequilas um but i am pulling out some just horrible horrendous baseball size damage on these aluminum rails so that's exciting to hear uh it's enough that the body guys are like look i gotta i gotta do that we can't keep messing around we're just losing money are you using the those tracks the glue tracks the glue tracks Glue tracks uh, glue. I use the glue tracks glue. Yeah. No, but use the, the, the glue the, tracks uh, tabs. Try those. Okay. Why? Which which ones? The black ones the, you're talking about? The big long ones, the I beam. Well, why would you use that on a baseball deck? Uh, on the rails oh, or just No. Uh, yeah. I thought I thought you were pulling like uh No, I'm not doing creases. This is this okay. is baseball hail in the rails. Uh, oh, okay. Where the, the body guys need to get them up and basically push for filler. Uh, these guys are killing themselves. I sat the body shop down and we sat on the phone with Christina from Anson and just set the whole shop up. Many uh, slide hammer, tabs, uh, multiple types of glue to handle the different weathers. Uh, so we're going to try and do a course next week and, and – Teach these guys how to do their own push. What, what about uh, are they using are they using the uh, al- aluminum uh, hot box as well? Are you using that? I am. I, yeah. Uh, and now <clears throat> it's not doing too much on the roof of them super duties. Uh, it will move some of the smaller stuff, and but where it does come in handy on those super duties and everything is you can heat that aluminum up. Yeah. Get it up to 190 degrees, and it pushes a little softer. Oh sure, and that that's no, that's the main I've heard thing. The same about the rails. That's the main thing I use my hotbox for now is that I heat up I heat up panels really quick with it. You know, I can't yeah. see using it on a, on a route or something like that. But if you have a shop and you don't have a hotbox, a regular hotbox or, or aluminum one, I, I think it's it's self defeating. Oh yeah, Daniel, do you yeah, use I, yours at all or no? Yeah, I do. No. Um, I, you know what I I'm a firm believer that heat does help push any dent well i don't okay. care what it is it absolutely does on aluminum absolutely does oh sure uh, absolutely but i think it 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 does on metal um i think guys don't uh give that enough credit i don't think guys really think about it that much i'd be one of those guys daniel because to be honest with you i i cold push 90 percent of the stuff i do yeah I but do if, you got, if you got something tough though where it's not really pushing that well and you're struggling Heat with it. Up. it. Yeah. It, heat does help that kind of a situation. That's and when I start turning to heat. I mean, I I became a believer because I was using the heat on every dent on a motorcycle tank. And that's what proved it. Because I I mean, I remember the first time I had a dent that was locked up really, really tight. And I had that tank mounted for a week. And every day I would go there and I'd push, push, push and get nothing out of it and have it. And then finally, it just it finally moved that one time. And then I was off to the races. But heat does help the metal move, I think. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So what I got uh, I I got uh, something new from Ultra. What'd you get? They have, I got the new titanium hammerhead. Okay. Is it and, a mushroom head? Yeah, it's a yeah. it's a big head, uh, a little bit a little bit more dome than like the Drew's flatty. It has a, a little bit more of a peak to it, which I really like, and but it's a higher grade uh, titanium. Uh, okay. Drew uses a a softer titanium, and this is a higher grade, so you can 
you can kind of abuse it a little bit more without you know marring it up or roughing up the surface yeah because i i ended up marring up my my drews uh one and i had to sand it and polish it out again Mm. uh to be able to use it so i don't know whose titanium tip i have i think it might be a dent technologies um I have no idea. I picked it up from Anson out of the, the slide bins, so I don't know which ones they are. But I haven't marred up the end of it, so it must be fairly soft. Yeah, because that's the thing I found out is there's different grades of titanium, sure. softer and harder, uh, which I did not know. Yeah, so. well, I just got uh, Ultra's, that, that new soft tip, the cap with the interchangeable caps with the locking lip on yeah. it that you were telling me about. I just got that one in and also got that one, uh, the, the matching twin to that from Edgy as well. Uh, what did you, what'd what'd you think of the Ultra? I haven't had a chance to use it because okay. I, I bought it for a very specific purpose and I'm probably going to get it into that next week. Uh, the GM fenders. Uh, on the top of the fenders, it's only about an inch wide. And I've had one tip from Dentcraft and I go through several of these soft tips. And I have to replace the whole tip. Well, after Ultra came out with theirs, uh, it, it looked like the perfect tool for that replacement because I can just replace the cap. The mushroom head is just that right size to do that one inch top. And then when we're doing these big baseball shots, I mean, those fenders take one hit right there. But GM's paint's a little more flexible. So uh, I'm doing some monster hits, some two and three inch dents right there on that upper body line. And that's what the that's I bought that tip exactly just for those fingers. And that I believe is high strength steel too, right? Yeah, it I mean it takes a lot to push those dents out. Yeah. Well Not easy. the the last day I've I've had a Silverado in my shop with an eighteen inch crease and a karate chop right on the crease through the body line on the rear of the, the bed. And I've been using the Carbon Tech rod with that, which is absolutely phenomenal. And the tip that I've been using is that new ultra tip with, with that has the locking caps on it f- for the red. And I mean, I, I blew through this crease fairly quickly using that red tip and it, it moved great. And that's high strength steel. And yeah. I was able to, to get it up really quick and clean and combined with the, the carbon tech, I'm, I'm, I'm sold on that sucker. You know, oh, yeah. unfortunately we don't get a lot of hail out here, but for truck beds, the carbon tech rod is just so ideal. If oh, you absolutely. could get it in there, oh my gosh, man, it, it, it's it's effortless. I mean, half the time I'm just leaning on the rod. I'm not even. I'm just holding it steady and just using my body to just rock it out. Now it's it's the must have too on these super duty roofs, and uh, but they will give you a, a, a workout and that ability to adjust that length. And I told you this when uh, right after I did them, but yeah, I, I now refer to them as the super boobies. Yeah. Because my titties were sore when I got done doing that row of trucks. Yeah, wow. they will give you a chest workout like you wouldn't believe. And I was taking, I have the Carbon Tech crossbar, so it's got the adjustable using the rope ratchet for the adjustable length. Yeah, and I was sucking up on those dents within a foot of the dent every time, and that way I had just phenomenal leverage ratio. Oh, nice. and it's still that was still a heck of a workout on just a handful of dents. Now I want to mention to guys out there, if you're seeing those red tips, um, you know, your reference to the red tips that, that Dentcraft have, the ones that ultra have is it's a more denser material. It's stiffer. It's not it as, is. it's not as spongy. Um, and I was surprised. I tried to stick it in. I got it. It fits in a half inch hole. Number one, number two, I tried to, pull the the tip out and try to get it jammed in that hole and purposely pull the tip off. Right. And I couldn't do it. It stayed on. So these things are staying on. Yeah. It's phenomenal. This is the only professional we can stock like that. And it makes sense. So I just crammed the tip in there as hard as I can. And I tried to whip the cap off. <laughs> I just shoved it right in that hole like you wouldn't believe. Just ugh, I gave it all that I had. Well, walked out <laughs> sweaty and tired. Just to take it to the next level, John, have you ever seen two dogs do it? 
they lock in, right? Or in most animals, they lock on. It's the same thing, man. It's locked on. You can't pull it out of the hole <laughs> until it relaxes. And the, and the tip is red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm thinking that's going to be a good tip um, on the board bedsides because you pull that cap off. you got those giant one-inch by two-inch holes, uh, rectangular holes. On the top of it. Red cap on all the way down the box side. Yeah. And I normally take my three-foot uh, three dent craft with the, the double-sided head on it, mm -hmm. and I run that through there. And I think that uh, that new ultra tip is going to be great. One, you eliminate the argument. And, and everybody I know that's done aluminum rigs gets the same argument when they're at the body shop. Do you have special tools for aluminum? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's having the soft tips. It kills the argument. Sure. Yep. Definitely. And I can rock through those those Ford bedsides pretty darn fast. I got that, even the big hard shots into them. Yeah. So now well, Edgy he markets his mostly for a tap down. So I actually have his with the the interchange caps on the square tap down now that came from Anson that they gave away at the uh, open house there in in March I think it was. Man, that thing's uh, that's a killer. I got the black cap on it, which is his hardest one. I was doing huge, I was, like I was talking about, doing huge dents on rails and the ones that I had to save. And that cap was tapping down the big stuff and just getting me glass smooth in a hurry. Yeah. That, well, Dave, I believe that he has three different durometers of, uh, of harnesses. Four. four. He's got four different uh, durometers. So I, I know I, I only had the green one. It was, it was soft. And yeah, the black ones. Yeah, soft. we got the early versions. We did. Frankly, I thought they were all too soft. They're a little bit too soft, and they didn't fit through a half inch hole. Or they would, but you're not getting it out. You're, you're going to leave it yeah, in, you're, in the hole. You're going to lose the cap. Yeah, but the new ones, I believe he made some modifications. I just haven't had the opportunity to get some. Yeah, just as the black cap. caps are the hardest. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, the other things that I got from Anson, I got my shipment in yesterday. I got the new uh, rope ratchets, not the ones that lock on to. Uh, your hood, uh, your your hood stand. The uprights on the hood stand. Right. right, but he just he came up with just regular ones with paracord, and they're like seven dollars each. So it was like a no brainer. They're blue paracord, and they have the you know the S hooks on each end, and it has a ball on the end, kind of like. Now these the are ones. dent engineer straps. Yeah, dent engineer straps, yeah. Okay. So those I I figured I you could always use straps around. And I tend to blow through the, the the rope fairly quickly. So, you know, with a paracord, it's it, it works on the red ones that uh, clamp onto your hood stand. And I figured I'd just get a couple sets what of What size those. diameter is the rope? The rope is tiny. I don't know. If I had to guess, it's probably like 7, 30 seconds. It's really small. See, I like going up one, one scale. I like a little bit bigger rope. Do you have the quarter inch for, for no, I, I've got yeah. it the quarter inch and eighth inch. Those are yeah, the quarter inch. I like the quarter inch personally, but I don't. Do you know what? I could be speaking out of turn. To be honest with you, I don't know. I'm terrible with, when it comes to math and measurements and geometry. Yeah, I keep uh, the quarter inch and the eighth inch rope ratchets um, for when I suspend uh, sunroofs. What would you say that the the rope is on on the ones that they have the clamps on it? The day? eighth inch, eighth inch. Yeah, that's eighth what inch. it is. It's eight okay. inch. It's the same yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. All so right. that, and I got another e, uh, Talon wedge from uh, oh, Stucky. Yeah. 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 So now I got two of those. And I got three of them. You got three. <laughs> How many did you pay for? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> oh, okay. I paid off for all of them. I, I only I, have one. Honestly, I use them for um, taking off trim, taking off. Uh, bed rails i know with that hole in the end i mean you hook your finger into it it doesn't I, slide I use it probably more for De taking trimming. off trim yeah, yeah. Nice. it's a it's a great tool for i i wish they'd make it about a quarter inch to three eighths inch wider that's probably not going to happen son i know he's going to have to make a whole new I, mold to do something hey, like i can that. wish i can put it out there you yes. He should so, have checked with Daniel first before making it. Everybody, if you're making tools, check with me first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else did you end up, Daniel? What else did you get? I got some uh, 
well, I got I got some uh, small diameter just rods from Ultra, but I didn't have the tips for them. Um, they take a different threaded tip. They're they're a smaller diameter, and okay. no, it's not the same. No, it's the same five sixteenths, but it's but it's three eighths diameter, so they're smaller. Um, so you can get them into factory holes when you just need a straight rod. Um, but he he has a whole set of tips. You know, he has soft tips, sharp tips. Um, yeah. Now these are perfectly straight rod. You know, just your regular your regular. Uh, so you got the ninety rod. degree, yeah, 90 the, degree tip? yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. It's not ninety; it's like what is it, forty-five or whatever. Yeah, okay. he, I think he makes a double bend with that too, as well. Yeah, and removable handle and stuff like that. Sure, um, it's just a good, good small little pick for doing stuff up close, you know, on the edge of the hood or whatever. Okay. And um, finally, got the tips to go with it. I didn't have tips to go with it, and I got those, and really like it. Well, I'm headed down to Ultra next week, and my major purchase is going to be the the Kiko uh, bridge system. I'm finally going to pop on one of those, you know, because now uh, Kiko has an attachment to make the bridge into uh, the puller. What do they call it? You know, when it's just yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has the uh, it has the bases from their mini lifter, right? Yeah. Uh, no. No, 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 no. What? You sure? Well, they have two. They have two different systems. They have one that's a, a big leverage bar. Yeah. And then they have one that's um, like the bridge system. It's basically using the the body from their mini lifter, their robo lifter, and it's got two of those on with a bridge. Are you talking about that? I'm looking it up right now because I didn't really notice the feet. I thought the feet were, well, there's the K bar. If that's what you're referring no. to. And the K bar has got that like three inch by three inch square foot. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So the bridge system does have the feet that looks like yeah. the mini yeah. lifter. The mini lifter. Honestly, the K bar is too short. Well, that's why I'm going with the, the, the bridge system because now yeah. you could take one side of the, the bridge system off and make it into a uh, a K bar, like a leverage bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's way way better. Or is it? You know what? I think it might be the other way around. I might be speaking out of turn here. I think you could take the K bar and add their new attachment to it to make it a bridge system. It, yeah, I. All right, I'd you're gonna go with the other one. Yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have report back. Report. Yeah, so that's just an early, an early thing. But that is gonna be my next my next purchase. Is uh, right. I believe it might be the K bar with uh, right. the extra foot attachment that you get directly from Keiko to make it a bridge system. Okay. Gotcha. So. so now you guys that have been around Facebook a little bit and seen some of the new stuff from Cam Auto Pro, they're, yeah. they're doing some of the, uh, the glue pulling stuff. Yeah, it's all, all glue pull stuff, but it's more for the collision industry than for us PDR guys, but it still looks pretty promising. So I do have a kit coming from them. And we're going to give it a good walkthrough at this body shop and really, really test out. There's parts of that system that I like and the other parts that I didn't like. Right. It's like if I could customize it myself, it would be awesome. Well, I'll get some photos as soon as it comes in. I'm hoping it'll be in when I, I go back to South Dakota this weekend. Uh, and then and hopefully we'll be able to put it through its paces couple of these super duties that we have, I mean, they've got grapefruit size dents in the cab corners, that sort of stuff. So we're really, that's hoping. coming. That's those are coming out of Canada, right? I believe so. Um, I'm not exactly sure. So, but it's cam auto pro.com. If you guys want to look up their website, Did you just order directly out of their website. Um, actually, uh, I, I got to talk to somebody. Thing. Yeah. I, I was dealing with, uh, Charles, so, Alan, Alan oh, so, so you talked to him. So is he sending me and Vince one too? Yeah. <laughs> I think John probably paid for it. He's not getting any freebies. So, yeah. Well, we got that you're, coming you're in. not working the system right. <laughs> <laughs> I got that coming in and I'll, uh, I'll get some photos and hopefully some videos when we get some mess with it and give a report back on, on how well it pulls. Cool. Yeah, I like it. 
Um, I also bought a, I finally sprung for the ultra, uh, slide hammer. Um, and I'm going to be selling my pool dog and my dent gear slide hammers because I got the ultra one. So if you know what's different about the ultra, it's, it's basically, um, kind of a hybrid of both of those all in one. It's got a removable weight. But the best thing about it, honestly, is it's got a, on the tip, so it's got a pass-through, but it's got a plastic adapter that you just spin, and it closes off one end. So it closes off from a pass-through to a close end, and um, it's it's just pretty. It's pretty. (laughs) It's a pretty tool. (laughs) All right, all right. It's a work of art. It is. They did a really nice job on this thing, and I've wanted it forever. And I was like, ah, yeah. I was frustrated with my other ones, uh, and it's a little bit longer and has a little bit more, you know, pull. So to maybe it. you get a little bit more throw out of each interview. You do, and it's just, you know, I think it's they've that really was, perfected that that slide hammer. That was the the one thing that I found to be a uh, turnoff on Drew's. He's got that really compact one where the uh, whole handle, when it's collapsed, covers the shaft. But uh, the throw on it was too short for me. I, I didn't find it to be comfortable. It's a, it's a well-made tool, and it looks cool and kick-ass. Yeah. You know, there's sometimes, though, you want a, a kind of a really small slide hammer, I think. Yeah. Uh, when you got that light stuff on the rail. And you don't really need a hard pull. Now, see, I, I have a set of uh, what I call my weak tabs and weak glue for those moments. Yeah. You know, for years, I, I was I remember being at MTE years ago when Drew's Tools came out with his slide hammer, the little one. And I thought, oh, wow, this is awesome looking. It's great. I bought it and I shelved it. I, I had no luck with it at all. But I'm not doing hail damage, and I know people swear by that, that by that slide hammer for hail, you know, doing rails and stuff like that. Yeah. But in in the market that I was in, doing big smashes and door dings and stuff like that, I just never really had a use for it. But I started pulling it out the last few months and started using it again. And what what you're saying, John, is is exactly what I'm using it for. Is for the lighter hits where I just need a quick pop and you know popping off lighter yeah. hits, and it works yeah. really good for that. Yeah, and you don't want that. You don't always want that hard, heavy pull. Right. So I've been using that recently, but you're you're right, Daniel. I I I might end up springing for for the ultra. It is just it is a work of art. It's beautiful, and it, it's passed through, and it's and it also has that stop. So you know, with the interchangeable ones. and and it has the spring. It has the spring. It's spring. all in one. I mean, it's it, it really is all. No, I I like that spring on the the slide hammer, um, but. <laughs> It is a uh, a tip flinging son of a gun. Yeah, I mean, I have chased my tips all the way across the building um, many times because uh, it, the your tabs the tab will pop off. Tab yeah, that. the the tab will pop off when I, I don't expect it, you know, and I don't have my hand in the right spot. <laughs> Boom! It's like that's never that's happened my, before. Really? That's my three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm walking up, watching a black ice go sailing across the shop. Right. In slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> it's somebody and I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is one of those times that, you know, this is like the time of year that people are starting, well, maybe not really starting to slow down because Colorado's just killing, killing oh, tax right now. It's just it getting is. buried and buried and buried. But, you know, I, I find that towards the end of the season, People are starting to slow down a little bit, maybe in different parts of the country. They're coming back and they're starting to relook their tools and see what they're going to need for the following season. And they have a, a pocket full of money and they're they're willing to spend some of that money right now. Yeah. Well, and Anson's got our uh, Ultra's got a whole new website and a whole new catalog out. Yeah. Anson's been gearing up heavy and, and everybody's got new stuff out that's been great. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. exciting. There's there are a handful of new products coming down the road that people have shared with me as well. So there 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 might be a little bit of a drought 
recently, but there there are some tools coming down the, the pipe here. I think we're still going to have a busy fall, though, hail-wise. Um, those of us up north are uh, getting it. Um, I heard just the other day that the, the Sturgis Rally got hit. Um, and I keep hearing rumors about it now. It never made any reports, but that'll be interesting to see what kind of damage moves out of that. I had a truck show up that was driving across the middle of South Dakota. Thing is hammered. It's going to be coming in in December. It gets a hood, a roof, left side, and all PDR the right. Yeah. I've never gotten hail damage for a motorcycle tank. I don't I think you that. would. Yeah, it's not the the last time I seen it that big would have been 2007 when it hit the Sturgis Rally. Uh, guys on the interstate actually rolled over and laid their bikes on top of them for the protection. <laughs> That's how bad the hailstorm stones were. I looked at a brand new pickup. The people bought it, had the fifth wheel hitch put in, towed their fifth wheel from Rapid City to Sturgis. So I had 40 miles on this truck. Oh. I glue pulled the one cab corner. Every other panel was replaced on wow. the truck. Uh, All replaced. That's heartbreaking. Roof, other cab corner, both box sides, fenders, hood. Wasted. All of it. That same storm. That was a that stuff was nasty. If you didn't have a helmet on, you got concussions. Concussed. Well, the, the last one that hit Denver, it looked like they weren't round hail balls. Oh, no, like Sputnik are... satellites. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Those were some. They big, look wicked. Yeah, they look like medieval uh, torture yeah. things. Ball and chain. <laughs> it was just missing the handle, and it was a perfect mace. Mace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mace balls. Yeah. Those. Those were some tough stuff, and the damage was just brutalized. So. Yeah. But hey, but, also coming up next week. Speaking of tools, yep. keep your eye on your app stores. We'll be releasing the new update for Mobile Tech RX. That'll be out next week. We just had the long meeting today. I got assurances that it's going to be next week. Uh, a couple of guys are gone this week, so they're letting all the smoke settle. Everybody's going to be back on Monday, and it should release by Wednesday. So keep an so eye on that. Well. So there's going to be a full paint and body section in there. Um, yes. This was really, yeah, this is for guys like Vince who do – uh, a lot of paint work and bumpers and that sort of stuff. So you're going to see a lot of those changes coming into there. You're going to see a few tweaks and changes into the R&I section. So we're also going down the road on this uh, conventional. So we're going to slowly start moving in R&R times or hoods, roofs. Uh, you're going to be able to put in your paint, your materials, all those labor times now in your back office. Cool. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll really come in for the, the companies that do multi-purpose. It'll really add a whole nother dimension. And that's what we do. Our, yeah, exactly. Guys like you. And there's a lot of guys like you. There's also a lot of small body shops that uh, honestly, this summer has been the summer body shops. We were collecting them through the winter. Uh -huh. But I think we've had 40 or 50 body shops sign up with us this summer alone just for hail. Yeah. Well, I just put in my, my first big, big, big order on parts. We have a 911 in the shop right now. And uh, I I had to order, you know, about $2,000 worth of parts on this. And, and I used Bumble Tech RX to get everything. And uh, the only problem that I had was that they were trying to charge me tax. But the cool part about, about it was it had my local Porsche dealership, Porsche dealership on it. So all I did was I just emailed him a copy of the parts uh, the parts report, and he got it. He's like, yeah, no problem. Have them for you next week. Boom, done. And we are working with our partners on that tax issue, and hopefully next season when the parts 2.0 kind of comes out, they are revamping that. Hopefully we're going to be able to take the local dealers and be able to work with them with their delivery routes well, and even, take a lot of those into account. Even if there's some way of inputting a business's resale number into it, and then automatically right. it just doesn't that's, show up. That, you know? That's what it's going to take, and that's what we've discussed with our partners. And it's just going to take a while for, you know, they're sitting in a situation where, you know, we this is the first time anybody's ever been able to do something like this. Yeah. So, oh, it's awesome, though. Uh, 
It's, yeah, our demands are are going to be slow to be met, but they will eventually be met. But it was cool because the guy at the Porsche dealership, he's used to me calling in everything, and boom, you know, I'm like, no, yeah. I'll, I'll just email it to you. He's like, really? And then he got it. He's like, yeah, this is perfect. This is all I need. Yeah. He's got the VIN number. He's got every one of Porsche's part numbers. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it very convenient. And you can do that for any dealership, you know, and, and for those of you who've never messed with that, you can still put all those parts right in Mobile Tech RX and then just email only the parts list to your dealership. Yeah, and that's exactly what I did. Just he didn't see my estimate, he didn't see anything, but he just got a parts list. Yeah. You know, and it was really cool. So but I do want to recap a little bit on a few of the other episodes because I gotta give a shout out and thank yous to the guys that are listening that uh, on episode 128, which we had Patrick Nilke, which was a, a commercial insurance producer, he's called me up and he wanted to thank me and thank our listeners for, he, he got a lot of guys calling him for, for insurance, for their businesses. He was actually surprised, uh, you know, the, the turnaround and how many people called him. And awesome. I was surprised to find out how many guys don't have business insurance. <laughs> So I think there's a lot of you guys out there that if you don't have business insurance and you're not protecting yourself, you, you better get some. If you don't call Patrick, Paul, call someone. Uh, but you got to protect your assets and protect yourself. And yeah. Patrick, you know, if you go back and list, listen to episode 128 or if you just look at the episode, if you don't want to listen to it, all his information is there. He knows our industry now and he studied it for months before we had him on. So give Patrick a call and he'll definitely hook you up with any of your insurance needs for your business or for your personal. So Awesome. Yeah. Uh, there's. Go ahead, Daniel. Well, um, I think we should address uh, what we talked about last week. We took a little survey of uh, guys of uh, whether we should have uh, Martin Glenjoy on and the consensus is no. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. I don't think so the what? consensus was no, but it kind of went that route. And I, I totally understand why. Yeah. Guys, guys are afraid of his identity being revealed with a phrase or something like that. Or, you know, we we try to make it clear that we we don't want to know who he is. We don't want to reveal who he is. We don't and none of us know who he is right now. Not no, all. none. So well, and, guessing just like you are. Yeah. Um, and that would be first and foremost if we ever ended up doing it. But, um, so, so far it doesn't look like we're going to probably have and, one. And it's not, it's not to say that we won't have them on in the future. It's just right now when things are touchy and, and, uh, you know, we got to protect himself and his family or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if the guy has a family or kids. Or I hate to I know. hate to use this phrase, but you know maybe after the smoke settles, we can uh, <laughs> then we can bring him in. But yeah. So either way, I I had it all set up. I had I had all the modulation ready for him. So if he does decide to do it, that's perfectly fine. He he knows how to contact us. Well, and, since uh, we have all the equipment set up, if anybody out there has any information they want to share, we can disguise your identity, <laughs> have you on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And something else that is definitely coming down the, the pipe here, which will probably be our next episode, we are going to entertain uh, episode two on the wholesale market. We'll have definitely Dave Shalott back on and as long as Paul Corden is not too busy to inhale we'll have him on as well and we're going to entertain that again and go a little bit deeper than we did the first time around now it probably won't make it um, really really soon but Dave did send us at Mobile Tech his uh, wholesale matrix and we are going to get that programmed in and hopefully add it to price it in so we That'd be awesome. Speaking of price of debt, this week alone, I mean, I was so fired up after having Dave on, Dave and Paul on two weeks ago that I'm just laying down these estimates. And I know we wanted to talk about this. We kind of went on a tool tangent and uh, we're getting near the end of the show here. But I've I've killed it this week with price of debt. The price of debt is just awesome. I mean, $2,000 days and barely, you know, having having to strain at the end of the day on, on, on my arms is kind of nice. It's nice. awesome. Yeah, it really is. Sending new so, goals. 
do we, um, you know what? Is it too early to talk about MTE? I think it is. Is it? <laughs> well, okay. just briefly touch. I don't know. I'm I'm starting to think about you know I'm, we're going to book our hotel room and stuff. That the exciting thing is is MTE this year is moving to a bigger venue. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. So if you haven't come, this is a great reason to come. Yeah. Um, if you've been coming and you're like, oh, I think I'm going to take next year off. Don't take this year off because it's going to be bigger and better. And, and it's at the Orlando Civic Center, correct? Yeah, um, it's their, it's the huge convention, convention center. It's convention the, center, yeah, 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 yeah. It's huge, and it it's right huge. next to right next to Universal Studios entrance and the downtown, which uh, has tons of bars and dance clubs and all kinds of fun nightlife. Which uh, a few years ago, me, Vince, and Mike had a very good time there. Very, very good time. I don't think yeah. I got home one night until like six o'clock in the morning. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that to anybody. <laughs> yeah, this year it should be all under one roof. No more multiple rooms. No more going outside. No more crisscrossing. Yeah, everything should be under one roof. Under so, one roof, and of course. Uh, our resident drunk Daniel Grom checked out the bar scene at the host hotel, and he's giving it two thumbs up. Really, <laughs> resident drunk? I'm never drunk. Why? Not? I'm only drunk during the Dent Olympics, <laughs> the drunk Dent Olympics. That is. Yeah, and That's who, the only time I get drunk. And Daniel, I get buzzed. Who, whoever is <laughs> donating their vehicle for the drunk Dent Olympics, make sure you get the friggin' insurance on it. Yeah. So, Check the insurance box. Yeah. <laughs> you know you know what I'd like to see in the Dent Olympics, the regular Dent Olympics? I'd like to see a uh, speed Dent Olympics. So a normal Dorting, like not, not the... Because I can't crack the paint enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to see a, you know, how fast... A timed event. A, I think a timed was. event, how fast you can take out a normal Dorting. Not, not the big wackos that they... They put in the car. Right, those, for the dent Olympics. But yeah, those are tough. Daniel, so I'd throw you away on that. And I think we can probably okay, go. I'm, I'm, I would take that challenge. Cart. Yeah, I think it's good. We can get us a shopping cart to make a normal everyday dent. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we could do, too, is like, I know I could blow Daniel away on it. But, no, you can't. And then, and well, we're going to do it regardless if there's an event or not. We're we're making two identical. <laughs> Somebody's dents. car is getting dented, and you guys are racing. Yes, on it. we're racing. And then okay. John, we could do a, a glue pull on a rail. Who's the fastest on that? And John will just smoke us all. <laughs> those guys in that glue pull competition, they're getting. Uh, yeah, those guys are phenomenal. I think what Woody won that last year. No. Was it? Or he, was it, didn't it? Did they do it last year? Because I thought they didn't do it last year. I, I'm not sure, but I don't think Woody year. won anything. I think he's more there just for the the show of it and his speedos, right? He, he won maybe I'm thinking before. the year before. So it, I think it was the year before. Yeah, I don't think they did a glue pool last year. Yeah, I don't think they did last year because they had so many people enter that they ended up going down quarter panels on those cars too. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's because right. I wanted to enter the glue pool just to see how I'd measure up. I'm not thinking I'm anything good. I, I, I tell you, I suck at the competitions in Japan. I yeah. fixed half the rail. I, 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 I just went into dent fix mode, you know, and I, I, I went to cross check and make sure my dent was good. And I fixed the next three in front of my dent. I didn't even cross check my own dent. <laughs> I, I cleaned up everybody else's work. It was terrible. It was so embarrassing because by the time I figured it out, there was a whole crowd of people standing to my side going, why are you doing work on all those other numbers? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. Dude, you pulled the Toledo. Toledo <laughs> did that. His first time in, in the Dent Olympics back in Tampa, Florida. He started working on his dent. And, of course, it's Mike Toledo, so everyone gathered around to watch Mike and put some pressure on him. And, you know, he's, like, being all – cool and everything and he turns around and then goes back to his dent he fixed someone else's dent <laughs> <laughs> disqualified <laughs> yeah you should be disqualified for that i think he was <laughs> was he in japan yeah. they at least judged every dent after it was done after each competitor yeah so then i didn't i'm i would have catapulted my guys my competitors way <laughs> 
was, you are it was awesome. disqualified. disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So, all right. Any final words, guys, before we close out the show here? Yeah. Uh, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> all right well we do want to thank everyone for tuning in to another episode this was episode 131 of pdr tool time and who is that brought to you by that is brought to you by let's make it anson anson tequila tools yeah and botany 500 and if you call in now boys and girls you can win a wardrobe and a luggage ensemble by samsonite samsonite yeah Sam's but with all honestly, uh, you know, Anson is putting out some really cool tequila tools right now. Actually, one other thing about that that I got, I got peak knockdowns from that are now in the tequila set, and they are the legit really good peak, and they're sharp as hell, and I can't wait to put those suckers to the test. Sweet. And and did you get their uh, tequila knockdowns? That's. That's they're what well, no the just, they're just aluminum threaded aluminum yes yes yeah. love those they're nice and short that's what I have my edgy tool tip yeah on. they they're fantastic yeah and they come in red green yellow and blue yeah yep. they're square and have a magnet in them yeah so they yep. don't roll away they're fantastic but they're not too long uh, which I love so. Yeah, I think that's a personal preference. Some guys like short knockdowns, other guys like long ones. Well, here's here's uh -oh. my here's my thinking. On this. Oh. I love this profession. <laughs> so, if you're using like a VIP tip, the longer it is, it's it's easier to get it on its edge, and then you get little marks. Tell me more. So, the shorter. I think you're able to keep it straight and not get those marks. So there you go. All right. Awesome. All right. Too geeky. On that you. note, Daniel Grob, <laughs> level up your tools. And don't do stupid stuff. And peace out. This has been another episode of PBR Tool Time.